what I told my team is, I want to be in the top five or the bottom five, not in the middle. I'm always telling you that CEOs matter. You might think in a company with tens of thousands of workers that one individual, even if he's the top guy, just can't make much of a difference. I'm telling you that view's wrong. Just look at T-Mobile. It's the smallest of the four major wireless companies in the US, US but it's taking share all over the place, growing like a weed. T-Mobile's brilliant, ultra-competitive CEO, John Leisure, has been waging a one-man guerrilla war against the rest of the industry by giving people what they want, a wireless company that's simple, transparent, no long-term contracts that lock in, cheaper prices in the competition, much better customer service. He's basically the Che Guevara of the cell phone business, except he's a good guy and he dresses in magenta. And guess what? Based on the strong quarter T-Mobile just reported this morning, Ledger's winning. T-Mobile added 1.8 million customers, and at this point, the company accounts for, get this, nearly 100% of the post-paid phone growth in the entire industry. It's a revolution. And I bet the stock would have been up a lot more today if not for the fact that T-Mobile spending heavily to build out its network so it can compete even more aggressively going forward. Now, earlier today, I got a chance to chat with John Leisure, the president and CEO of T-Mobile. It was a hoot. Take a look. John, I can only describe the numbers as staggering. 1.8 million total net ads, eight consecutive quarter over 1 million. Where are these people coming from? Well, and, and keep going down, Jim. We had 1.1 million postpaid net ads and a million postpaid phone net ads. And so far, AT&T and Verizon have announced minus 327 and minus 180. So more than 100% of the growth. And they're coming, you know, they're coming from all of the other carriers, mainly because we're doing my philosophy of business. We're listening to our employees and listening to our customers and shutting up and doing what they tell us. And so far, the uncarrier is resonating with customers in a big way. Now, we have actual empirical data about reson resonating because you have port ratios that no one else seems to be willing to talk about. <laughs> yeah. uh, can you talk about for ATT and Verizon? What you you know, it's, it's funny. Um, port, it postpaid porting ratios is very simple. You know, when people, it's only one of many indicators, but if a customer leaves and goes to another carrier and takes their number, i.e. ports with them, we track the ratios. And if it's 1.0, that means it's even. You're losing as many as you're gaining. And um, two years ago, T-Mobile was always negative, and we went positive. And it's been two years uh, that we have had a positive porting ratio as a company. And it's been five quarters, by the way, that never ever in a given month ever has any carrier been positive with T-Mobile. Uh, the overall porting ratio in Q4 was 1.7. In Q1, it was 1.93. And so far in Q2, which is April, it's 2.2 to 1. AT&T's not bad. AT&T was 1.8, 1.85, now they're 2.05. Uh, Verizon was 1.4, 1.6, now they're 1.8. You get the trend. Yes. Uh, so, it's, yeah, so we're porting very positively, and that's one of the reasons the, you know, dumb and dumber, they don't want to talk about it because, you know, well, well, I, their clocks. You, you talked about, like, sometimes you just want to throw away all your homework when I talk <laughs> with you. Talk about philosophy of listening, talk about dumb and dumber. What I keep hearing is that if there's a device out there that you think that the customer wants, that you've heard, they like it, you got a new device here, let's talk about it for a second because maybe this is what you need 700 megahertz for. Listen, what we've got is, um, remember, I took the company over two and a half years ago, and the fascinating part about the growth of the company is we've gone from the end of 2012 from 33 million customers to 57 million. You did an acquisition okay. too. To right, that was about, that was about 8.9 million, so most of this is uh, organic growth. And what, what's taken place is, two years ago right now, we announced the first uncarrier move. 100% no contracts, equipment installment plan. Do you know that it's not even two years ago that we got the ability to sell the iPhone? Okay, so now, you know, you got on the stage here, this is a full range of devices, the Samsung uh, Galaxy 6 Edge, et cetera, the Note, the LG uh, G4 that just came out, and now, we have all the major devices. What this was part of, Jim, is when I came, um, on the way in, people said, yeah, but who is this guy? He's not a wireless guy. 
And you know what? It became my biggest strength because I wasn't. I mean, I needed wireless for dummies. But you know what I did? I spent every night dialing into an observation line where I could listen to both sides of customer service calls. I could hear the calling party and I could hear my person. And then I spent every day going to stores and I just listened. And sitting there on the table was everything you needed to do. And I just did them. And I listened and I, you know, my business philosophy is listen to your employees, listen to your customers, shut up and do what they tell you. And each of our uncarrier moves and the way I run my company is completely aligned with that. And not, not the lieutenants, the people in the store talking to the customer and the people picking up the phone. Everything you need to know is right there. I was with a group of CEOs last night. And they all, when I said that I'm going to be talking to you, <laughs> uh, one after another, they said, ask him why he feels like he can tell the truth. Why he's not afraid. Yeah. Why he's willing to say things. Here you say dumb and dumber. Yeah. I, look, I, I, <laughs> I talked to hundreds of CEOs. No one is even yeah. willing to talk about the competition. Yeah. Who are you that you are willing to speak like this? I, I'm my customers, too. How do customers think? How do employees talk? Okay, just think about the mere act. And I know, you know, you're a very proper guy. You're here at CNBC. But you go out with a bunch of the CEOs. They're, people think of them as suits. Okay, they're suits. Suits, ties. By the way, the first thing they do when they go home, what do they do? They take that damn suit off so fast they can, and they put on the same stuff. Now, their sneakers don't say T-Mobile CEO like mine, but I am, I'm at a stage of my life and career where I am who I am. By the way, I match my brand. That's it. See, you're at a stage of life in your career, and yeah. you're fearless. Your general counsel is not right there saying, are you out of your mind? Now, is that because oh, you no. overrule your general counsel? <laughs> he actually is. Um, yeah, it, it, and and and... I am at the stage of a career in life where I am who I am, I am who my customers are, um, and my, you and I do something very similar too. I love social media, okay, and for years and years and years as a CEO, Ray FD violations, general counsels, human resources, by the way, I swear like a sailor. Uh, I mean, that, these are things that you can't normally do, but they resonate, and in social media, I spend every minute of the day just listening to individual customers, talking to them, and then when I run my staff meeting, like a suit does, I see reports and headlines and metrics, and then I just say, okay, if that's true, then why did this person just tell me this? And I think they're afraid, but by the way, right now, I think CEOs in general are getting pressured from their people and customers to be more open, be more honest, be less of a suit, be more attached to your customers and employees, and lead us, motivate us, show us the finish line. Well, uh, you talk, there's, I'd say the word that's used the most in your conference call is awareness. Magenta, awareness. Periscope, awareness. Twitter, awareness. There is an agenda to this besides you listen to the customers, but the customers are listening to you because of your, just your style. Yeah, my, uh, and, and by the way, as you know, it's same with any company, I have a team that's unbelievable. By the way, in, in T-Mobile on any given morning, the tens and tens and thousands of people that go to work, the average age is about 28 and a half. They're young, fearless people. My leadership team does exactly what I do. Answers individual customers work, you know, they have the same philosophy, and I, I'm a walking brand. Yes. And, and people even here, when I walk by, they'll say, what's up with them? What's up with that company? Why do they love their company so much? And I think it's contagious. People want to be part of it. And from the day I got here, Jim, I just told my people, here's where we're going. You don't get it. We're going to win big. And we're going to do it by focusing on customers. Well, courage and bravery, you've got them both. John Ledger, T-Mobile president and CEO. Congratulations on the great quarter, sir. Thank you, Jim. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.